I'll show you how to easily implement 2D parallax scrolling with Unreal Engine. Parallax scrolling is an effect used in 2D games that makes different layers of your stage move at different speeds to create the illusion of depth. This technique started to be heavily used around the 16-bit era and is still being used in modern 2D games. When we're using the perspective camera, simply placing our different background layers further apart will automatically create the parallax effect and we don't really have to do anything special. However, with 2D games you might want to use the orthographic camera instead for a more pure 2D look and the possibility of applying pixel perfect rendering. The method I'll teach you will apply horizontal parallax scrolling using the orthographic camera and is an elegant solution using UV scrolling through material nodes. If you want to code along step by step for practice, you can download the free starter project from the link in the description. This will give you the same setup I have here with a simple tile map, a character that can walk left and right, and our three background textures already imported. By the way, as a Patreon supporter, you can also get your hands on the finished project files with the parallax scrolling already implemented. First, we want to make sure our background textures are set up correctly and create sprites from them. Inside of the content, paper assets, environment, background layers folder, I have three different background textures prepared. I did this by simply dragging the PNG files into the editor. The one on the left called background will be our static sky that doesn't move. The graveyard is the layer that is closest to our player and will move the fastest. And the mountains will be wedged between the graveyard and the static background and move a bit slower. In the case of pixel art, we want to apply paper to the texture settings to make sure the pixel art is crisp and not blurry. Left click one of the textures, hold shift and click the other one, right click and apply paper to the texture settings. Next we want to create a sprite for each of these. Again, select all of them, right click, sprite actions, create sprite. Now we want to open up the blueprint which contains our main camera. In my case this is inside of content, 2D side scroller, blueprints and called BP side scroller character. For side scrollers it's very common to just have the spring arm and camera directly inside of the player blueprint and that's also the setup I'm using. The first thing you want to do is set up the static background that should just move together with the camera. Click on spring arm and add a component. Look for sprite and add a paper sprite. I'll call it static background. For the source sprite, we want to select the background sprite with the purple sky and moon. Now we need to align it to the rotation of the camera and spring arm by rotating the sprite by 90 degrees on the Z axis. Then also drag it away from the camera and somewhere behind the character. With an orthographic camera, the distance doesn't really matter since depth is ignored but I'll put it at 1500 on the x-axis just to give us some room to play around with the other layers. And when we start the game now, we have our static background that will always move with our camera and player. However, the mountains and graveyards we want to add now are only a couple of hundred meters away and should be affected by parallax scrolling. To keep things organized, I don't want to add the layers directly to the spring arm, but add them as a child of the static background. Click on the static background sprite component and then on the add icon. Add another paper sprite and call it Layer Mountains. For the source sprite, select the Mountain sprite and reset the location and rotation to have it be the same as the static background. Then drag it forward slightly so it's in front of the sky sprite. We then also want to adjust the height and drag the layer so that a couple of the mountain tops reach above the middle point of the moon. To add the last layer, again select the static background and then add a paper sprite. Call this layer graveyard and for the source sprite select the graveyard sprite. If necessary, again reset the location and rotation and then drag the sprite forward so that it's in front of the mountains. And then also adjust the height to your liking. I think a z value around minus 200 looks nice. If we start the game now, we can see that the three layers are present and in the correct position, however they aren't scrolling yet. To achieve this, we need to create a custom material. We can select any of the background layers and on the right side, under materials, we can see that we're using the masked unlit sprite material. This comes with paper 2D and is used by default. We now want to create a copy of this and then add our custom shader nodes. To find the material, just click on the folder icon and this will bring us to the paper 2D plugin folder. We actually don't want to copy this material instance, but the parent material it's based on, which is the default sprite material. We can just grab it, drag it into the content folder and copy here. Don't use move here, since this will delete the material in your other projects. 
Back in the content folder, I want to rename this to m underscore parallax sprite. For convenience, we'll right click it and create a material instance. Call it mi underscore parallax sprite. The material instance will make it easier for us to update default values, make variants, and is also more optimized. Now back in the BP Sidescroller character blueprint, we want to use this MI Parallax sprite on the mountain layer and the graveyard layer, not on the static background since it's not supposed to move. If we start the game, everything still looks exactly the same, but we've done the groundwork and if we apply changes to our Parallax sprite material, they will be reflected in the game. Open up the M underscore Parallax sprite material. First, we can do a little bit of cleanup here. The vertex color and both multiply nodes you see here enable a sprite color option. And this is something you might want to use and there are a couple of ways to keep this, however for the sake of simplicity and focusing on the parallax effect we'll remove this. In the material, select both multiply nodes and the vertex color and hit delete on your keyboard. Now for the source texture, connect the RGB to emissive color and the A to opacity mask. On the source texture you can see this UVs pin which basically allows us to set the X and Y, or in the case of Unreal Engine, X and Z coordinates for how our texture is being positioned on the sprite. When using the text chords nodes, like we are doing now, it will be centered in the default position. We still want to use the text chords as the base, but add our offset from the parallax scrolling to that. Right click and search for add. Connect the text chords to the B value and the output to the UVs. Just to demonstrate what happens here, we can write a value between 0 and 1 into the A slot and we can see how our source texture is being moved around. A value of 0.5 for example will move it to the left and up by 50% of the texture size. And if we click on apply and save and then go into our side scroller character, you can see how the UVs of the layers moved. Of course this is not the result we want, but I just wanted to show you how this works. We only want to scroll the UVs horizontally, so the next thing we want to do is split the X and Z coordinates so we can set them unrelated from one another. First, create two float nodes by holding the one key on your keyboard and left clicking. The top one will be the X coordinates and the lower one will be the Z coordinates. We now need to combine these, so drag off from the top value and look for the append vector node. Connect the bottom float as well and then put the result into add. Now we could for example only set the top value to 0.5 and let the bottom value remain at 0 to slide the UVs only horizontally. Of course, we don't want to have a static value of 0.5 but constantly update the value here. One fun thing you could do for an endless runner for example would be to just use the time node to constantly scroll the material. However, in our case we want to update the UVs depending on the camera position, so just delete the time node again and go back to connecting the upper float. We want to turn this float into a parameter that can dynamically be updated from our blueprints. Right click the node and convert to parameter. I'll call this camera pause x and make sure to remember the name because it's going to be very important in the next steps. Apply and save the material. Back in the BP side scroller character, go to the event graph and look for the begin play event. This fires one time when the game starts or the character is being spawned. There already are a lot of nodes here which are necessary for setting up the character, but we can just add our parallax code after that and don't have to worry about it. The first thing we want to do on begin play is get all of the layers that should be affected by parallax scrolling and create a dynamic material instance for each of them. These are of course the layer mountains and the layer graveyard. To get a reference to them, we can drag out the static background and get children components, which will output an array of the children. Instead of just dragging out the layer mountains and layer graveyard manually, this will make sure that we can easily add more layers as children of the static background later without breaking our code. We now want to iterate over every element in this array, so use a for each loop and make sure to connect the execution pin on the left side. Even if we drag off from the array element here, it doesn't allow us to create a dynamic material instance since it only views these as generic scene component objects. Drag off the array element and cast to paper sprite component. Connect the execution to loop body. Now when dragging off from as paper sprite component, we can create a dynamic material instance. We don't need to change any of the properties on this node, but we do need to save the return value in an array. Add a new variable and call it dynamic layers. Set the data type to material instance dynamic
and on the right side turn it into an array, since we need to save multiple entries here. Make sure to compile and save. Now we can drag out the dynamic layers here and get dynamic layers. Drag off from this and look for the add node, then connect the return value. All this does is loop through all of our layers and create a dynamic material instance which is saved in an array so we can access it later. Just to keep things organized we can select all of these nodes and hit C to create a comment. Now that we have a dynamic material instance and a way for us to update the value for camera pos x, we need to update this on every frame and pass the camera position through to it. Look for the event tick and again after the existing nodes we can drag off here. Add a for each loop node and then connect the dynamic layers array to iterate over every dynamic material instance. Here we don't need to cast and can just drag off from the array element to set scalar parameter value. And make sure to connect the loop body execution. For the parameter name we need to make sure it's the same one we defined in the material. And to make sure we don't have any typos we can just copy it directly from here and paste it into this field. For the value we can just get the camera and get world location from it. We only care about the x value so right click the return value and split struct pin. Now just connect the x to value. Compile and save and start the game. You can see that it kind of works now but it's just way too fast and going crazy sometimes. To see what's going on here, after the set scalar parameter value we can drag off and use the print string node and connect the value for x here. When we run around now we can see that we're moving thousands of units per second but a single unit will actually move the UVs by an entire length of the background image. We can simply divide the camera location by a certain value to make it move at a more realistic pace. Drag off the x value and look for the divide node. Connect the output to both the scalar value and the print string. Now it took a bit of trial and error for me to figure out a good value here, but I landed on 20,000 as a good divider. And now you can see that it actually takes us more than 10 seconds to move an entire unit and scroll the image for its complete length. We can now delete the print string and conversion node. To make things simpler, I actually also want to delete the divider of 20,000 and instead do that calculation inside of the material. So after the camera plus x, we can just divide by 20,000. And make sure to apply and save. And in the blueprint also compile and save. And now we have the same effect, but we're doing it directly in the material, which is easier to manage. But both of the background layers are still moving at the same speed and we want to make sure that the mountains in the background move slower than the graveyard which is closer to the camera. To achieve this we can add a multiplier that can be set separately for each of the material instances. After the division we can add a multiply node. Again, hold the 1 key on your keyboard and left click to create a float node. Right click it and convert to parameter. Call it parallax multiplier. Connect it to the multiply node and then apply and save the material. This value does need to be updated on each frame, but we only have to set it a single time on begin play separately for each layer. Back in the character blueprint on begin play, where we set up the dynamic material, we can apply this right away. Drag off from the return value and set scalar parameter value. Connect the execution. You can double click to create a reroute node and then also expand the comment area by dragging it. For the parameter name we want to use this parallax multiplier which we can just copy paste. The value is a bit more tricky since we want a different value for each layer. We can't just put a value in here, but we actually need to create an array that corresponds to our different layers. Here, where we loop over all of the layers, we get an array index. The index of layer mountains is 0 and for layer graveyard is 1 and we can use this to our advantage. Add a new variable and call it parallax multipliers. 
the type should be an array of floats. Compile and save so we can see the default value on the bottom right. Since we have two layers, we need to click the plus icon twice to add more elements. However, if you have more layers in your project, add the same amount of elements as you have layers. We want the zero index, which is the layer mountains, to move slower, so we can put in a value of 1.0 here. And to move the graveyard faster, we can use a value of 2.5 for example. Now drag out the parallax multipliers array and get a reference. For the index on get, we just have to connect the array index of the loop which will give us the 0 or the 1 depending on which layer we are currently on. The return value can then be connected to the set scalar parameter node for the parallax multiplier. And when starting the game now, we can see that the layers are moving at different speeds. You can now just play around with these parallax multiplier values until you find something that feels and looks good. I eventually ended up with a multiplier of 0.7 for the mountains and 3.0 for the graveyard. And the end result makes the game world feel so much more alive and immersive and I think all of your 2D games will benefit from having parallax scrolling like this. Hey, it's me from the future. After finishing the video I actually found a small tweak we can do to simplify the system a little bit. In the material, instead of using the camera pause X we can actually right click and just look for camera and get the camera position world space. And here we only want to get the x value as we did here. So we can just use a mask, the component mask, and click here. And we only want to use r, which in this case is the x axis. And we can then just connect this here and get rid of the camera pos x. And just straighten this up a little bit. And this still works the same way. If I apply and play, everything still works the same way. And we just simplified it because we can go back to our character blueprint and on tick where we always update the camera position x and pass it through to the material we can just delete this and get rid of this as well and again compound save and everything still works so sorry that i didn't do this from the beginning but this is just a small tweak you can do to simplify this thanks to my awesome patrons for making these videos possible 